everyone, welcome back to our channel. Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company here. Hope you guys are all doing well. I am having a fantastic day today. We've spent most of the afternoon down at the beach and I've even had my first swim of the year in the sea, which was absolutely freezing cold, but so good to actually get back out there and be out enjoying the sun, enjoying the weather and having a nice swim. We did cut our trip a little short because we didn't have a video ready for going live tonight so we have come home to do a video so that's why I'm a little bit dishevelled today. Um, and up until a couple of days ago I wasn't even sure what today's video was going to be about. I had kind of a brain blank and wasn't sure what to create. But as luck or fate would have it, a couple of days ago, we had an Instagram message come through asking us if we have a video on labelling cosmetic products. And we don't. And I actually thought that would be quite a nice kind of little business focused video for us to do today. So today's video is going to be about labelling your products for selling within the UK and making sure that your labels um, kind of comply with the UK legislation. And a couple of points to actually note before we begin is that this is based on UK legislation. Um, it is going to be fairly similar, if not exactly the same, in the EU, but as we have now left the EU, I'm not sure if there have been any kind of minor changes. So if you are in a country that is not the UK, you probably also want to double check your own country's guidelines for labelling, because they may not be the same as ours. And the other thing I want to mention as well is that this is all based on my own interpretation of the rules and the guidelines. So don't just rely on what I am saying, do do further research as well because it is always good to kind of research things in lots of different places and not to rely solely on one source for information. So by all means take what I'm saying uh, as part of your research, take it as advice but do also look in other places and do other research as well. Right, anyway, let's get on with talking about labelling cosmetic products. So I am going to be focusing today on cosmetic products that are kind of just in one layer of packaging. There are slightly different guidelines for, you know, sometimes you can get cosmetic products that are then placed inside kind of like another packaging box. Um, I'm not focusing on that today because we don't package any of our products in that way. And I know there are slightly different rules or guidelines on um, how you have to label your products if they are in packaging and then placed inside another kind of outer layer of packaging. And I'm not entirely sure on those rules. So we are focusing today purely on items that are only in kind of one layer of packaging. So the very first thing you are going to need to include on your labelling is the product's name and its function. So for us and our soaps, that is purely kind of like Dead Sea Clay Soap or Lemongrass Soap, um, you know, it's as simple as that. If the function of the product is not immediately obvious from the actual name or the packaging or the design, you do need to also elaborate and state what the function of the product is. If you are creating something like a soap or a shampoo and you are using the word soap or shampoo, that's gonna be enough. It is obvious from the word soap or shampoo what the function of the product is, so you wouldn't need to elaborate on that any further. The next thing that you're going to want to think about including is the ingredients. And for the ingredients, you need to header them, give them a little header that states ingredients. And when you are listing your ingredients, you are taking exactly what is written on your safety report. So generally, this is gonna be the post-saponification uh, names for something like a soap. You don't put in pre-saponification ingredients, it'll be post-saponification. Something like a body butter or a lotion, it's just gonna be the ingredients that are stated on your safety report. And again, your safety report should state what concentration levels those are present in. And that's gonna tell you what order you need to list your ingredients in on your label. You always need to list ingredients with the uh, one that is present in the highest quantities first and you work down from highest to lowest. 
The only exception is that ingredients that are present at less than 1% in the final product can be added at the end in any order. So things like allergens in essential oils or fragrance oils can go in any order at the bottom as long as they are after the ingredients in higher quantities. Things like colours, mica, things like that, they can go again at the end in any order. And when you are listing ingredients, you need to use their inky names. So for inner soap, for example, you would use the post saponification inky name. So something like, uh, let's think of something, coconut oil would become sodium cocoate. Something like shea butter would become sodium cocoa butterate. You know, do it like that. Always use the inky names because that is what is required on the labels. And for colorants and micas and things like that, you want to use the CI numbers to list them in your ingredient section. But again, all of this should be covered in your product safety report. This is what you're going to need to refer to if you are unsure, because that is gonna tell you the name of the ingredients, it's gonna tell you at what percentage it is present at in your recipe. So all the, uh, in, oh, all the information, sorry, I am stuttering today. All of the information you are going to need to include on that ingredient section, you are going to be able to find in your product safety report. So have that to hand when you are creating your labels. One point to note as well, if you are using fragrance oils, you do not need to list every single ingredient that makes up that fragrance oil. You can list your fragrance oils under one heading and that is parfum. And that is what is required for stating uh, on the ingredients label in terms of fragrance oils. It all goes down under Parfum. So that is nice and easy and you don't have to worry about listing every single ingredient in your fragrance oils, which is a relief because that would be a massive pain if you had to list every single ingredient because there can sometimes be an awful lot of ingredients in things like fragrance oils. You are then going to need to list any caution statements that are relevant to your products. And again, any caution or precautionary statements that need to be listed will be noted on your safety report. So you can refer to that and you can look at the hazard statements and then you can just take those statements and transfer them onto your labels. It is a really easy to do because your safety assessor will have added a section that states any kind of hazard warnings or precautionary warnings that need to be popped onto the product for you. You also need to list the weight of the item at the time of packaging. And if you are using the average fill system, you can show that you are using this with use of the little lower case E symbol. Of course, if you are actually, say, cutting the soaps to an exact size and weighing each one individually and wrapping it and then marking it, then you don't need to use the E system because you are weighing each item individually. But I think for most people, you will be using the average fill system. So you use the little E to let people know that it is the average net weight. The only kind of exception to this rule is if you are packaging samples that you are not charging for, you do not need to include the weight of the product. And if it is a single use product, so something like a bath bomb, in that instance, the weight of the product does not need to be on the packaging either. So those are two exceptions where you do not need to include the weight of the product on the packaging. You are also going to need to include either a best before date or a period after opening date on your products. And whether you include the best before or the period after opening depends on the actual minimum durability of your product. So if you are creating something like a soap that is going to be stable and durable for 30 months or more, then you only need to include the actual period after opening symbol. If you are making a product that perhaps is not going to last for 30 months, so perhaps something like a cream that has got oils in that are not gonna last for 30 months, then you need to include the best before date of the product. And you can either, with the best before, write best before end or BBE, or you can use this little symbol here, which is a symbol to kind of show best before end of. That is what this symbol here means. So this is what you use on products that have a minimum durability of less than 30 months. 
If you have a product like a soap that lasts for more than 30 months, then you can use the period after opening symbol. And all you do is you mark down with the correct kind of many months um, of how long that product is going to be good for after it has been opened. Um, and that is obviously down to what is noted on your safety report or what uh, you have kind of ascertained through your own stability testing. So keep notes of all your testing and then when it comes to listing the period after opening, you can actually kind of refer to your notes and get a good guide of how long you can put down in months for this symbol here. The next thing that needs to be included on the label is something that people can sometimes be a little bit unsure about actually including, and that is the name and address of the responsible person. And that is most likely you. The responsible person is the person that is named on the cosmetic product safety report. So if that is you, then it is your details that need to appear on the cosmetics label. And I know it can be worrying actually including your address, especially if you are working from home. You can just use your house number or name and your postcode so long as your address can be clearly identified from that information, but it does have to be on there and it is not legal to sell cosmetics products in the UK without actually having the address of the responsible person on the label. Uh, so unfortunately, it can't be left off um, and it is just something that I know can be worrying at first, but we have had our address on our products for three years um, and touch wood, we have never had any issues at all with having our address published on our products. And the next thing you need to include is your batch number. When you are making cosmetic products, as you know, you will have batch, batch record sheets and you will have unique batch numbers for each batch of product that you are creating. Those batch numbers need to go onto your uh, product labels. If you have to recall a product for any reason, it is so useful and it's essential really to have that batch number on the label so that you can quickly and easily recall any kind of products that may have any kind of issues with them. So a batch number is incredibly important and we just hand write ours on because we get our labels printed but because our batch numbers change so regularly we get our labels printed up and then we manually just hand write on our batch numbers to each individual label when we are wrapping up our products. So everything that I've stated is what needs to be included on your product labels if you are selling within the UK. And it is an awful lot to try and fit on labels. So if you are selling something like a soap and you are selling it without packaging, so kind of a naked bar, or if you are selling something very small that will not kind of fit all that information on, there are a couple of options you have. All of this information needs to be available at point of sale. So on a website, that would mean having it available published on the website for people to read. If you are selling in person at say farmers markets or events or in shops, then that information needs to be readily available. And if you cannot get it on the packaging for whatever reason, then it can be supplied separately on a separate card or you can have a POS stand that gives people all of the ingredients and all of the information so they have got that information to hand when they decide whether to make their purchase or not. If you are selling wholesale and you are selling to shops for them to sell on, it's a good idea to make sure that they are aware of this as well. Because we've actually had a couple of shops where we've taken our products in and they said, oh yeah, we'd love to stock them, but they're so pretty, we want to sell them unwrapped. And we have to say to them, no, you can't do that because if you do that, you will not have the ingredients and the safety information available for the customers to see. So we kind of have to educate um, the people in these shops just to let them know why they can't just buy our products and then take them out of the packaging and sell them naked. Because if you're kind of selling, a, if you're kind of working in a gift shop and you sell loads of different products, they are probably not going to be so well aware of the legislation for selling cosmetics as perhaps somebody like me or you who just works purely with cosmetics. So make sure that anybody that you sell wholesale to is also aware of that legislation. And that leads me on a little bit to white labelling. We don't personally white label. White labelling is where we would make our products and then give them to somebody else and they put their logo over it and sell it on as kind of like their brand. We don't do that, but a lot of people do. 
And white labelling it is uh, no problem with white labelling your products, but you need to make sure that your name and address as the responsible person remains on the labels. So again, if you are white labelling, make sure that the uh, people you are white labeling to do not change your back labels. Keep your back labels the same, make sure that your name and address is visible on the labels and just explain to the person you are making for that they cannot change the back label and they cannot take your name and address off the label. They can add their own details, they can add their own branding, but they can't take your name and address off because you are the responsible person, you remain the responsible person even if you are white labelling, unless of course they take your recipe and they get it assessed themselves and they get a CPSR for it, in which case they become a responsible person and they can take your details off, but it's highly unlikely that they would do that. So um, yeah, make sure your details remain on the products if you are white labeling. So I think that is about everything. To be honest, I feel like I've perhaps rambled a little bit today and I feel like some of this might end up being a little bit disjointed because I have done quite a few takes and uh, chops and changes because I keep getting my words wrong today. I think the sun's getting to me. So I hope that it makes sense. I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Any questions, pop them in the comments box. Um, life is so hectic at the moment. It is taking me ages to reply to comments. So apologies if you don't get a reply straight away. I am working on that, but there is so much going on that it is just taking um, a lot of time to get around to things at the moment. So apologies if I do take a while to get back to any of you. Right, well, I think that's everything. I am going to chill out now, go and have a shower, relax a little bit, and um, yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoy our content, please do hit the subscribe button. Please do give us a like, tell your friends about us and all of that. And we shall see you on Friday. I have no idea what we are doing on Friday yet, whether it is going to be soap or bath bombs or lotions or something else entirely. Not a clue. So I better get my thinking cap on because it's Monday now. So I haven't got long to work out what we're doing. But anyway, we'll think of something and we'll see you then.